Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use my Adobe Premiere Pro Effects and Transitions Preset Pack. These are now available on my website, justinodisho.com shop. And what they are is I've gone through all 100 plus of my Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials, picked out my favorites and your favorites of the best effects, and squeezed them down into a little over 40 different effects and transitions that you can use at a drag and drop convenience and they're all very flexible and easy to use even for a beginner. So you can read more details all about them on my website, but for those of you who do proceed and check out and grab a pack, you'll automatically receive a download link to your email. It should come in a zipped file like this in your downloads folder. You just unzip it, you'll find it in a folder. Wherever this is, make sure you know where it is on your desktop. And opening up Premiere Pro, I've just got a timeline with some example clips on it so I can show you how it works. But to install or import these presets is very simple. You just find your effects panel. If you don't see that, you can go to window effects, wherever it is. I'm just using the default workspace. And under presets, this little folder with the star, you can right click and import presets. When you click import presets, you can find that PRF preset file, wherever it is on your hard drive, press open, and you should see that they'll automatically open in your effects panel in their own folder as I've made them. So I've organized mine into two folders for you. One is effects and one is transitions. Now I've made all of these in the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018 as of February and that's where they all work the best in. If you are using an older version, many of these will still work. However, there will be a few that you don't have the updated plugins and updated effects that Premiere have added. I've basically built all of these effects so that they're drag and drop. You don't have to splice or cut the clips. You don't have to count frames. You don't have to put them on a new adjustment layer or anything like that. You just drag and drop and the clip will automatically apply all the proper effects onto it. So the way I've split them up here is effects and transitions. The effects, as you can see, just drag directly on and they're just visual effects, filters, overlays. For example, this is a Super 8 film look. Here's a cool one I like. It's called fisheye camera. You can just drag that on the clip and it automatically makes it look like you're looking through a fisheye style peephole. Very cool. You see it's combining a circle effect, sphere eyes, distortion, and a little bit of Gaussian blur plus some masking. And that's what all these effects do is they I've put together effects that look and feel like certain things. So that Super 8 camera is really cool. The fisheye camera is really cool. You also have echo effects or even fun random color effects. Like this one is called Dance Party. This just makes the colors bounce from one to the other. You can combine that with other things. This one's called Dreamy Vignette. If I drag that on, it kind of blurs the corners, makes it look a little bit more dreamy. And you see all the keyframes are in there as well, and they're scaled out no matter how short or long the clip is. And if you want, you can always go in there, delete or adjust things. But remember, if you're a beginner, you don't know what the heck all this stuff is, you don't have to touch that anyway. It's all set for you. Like I said earlier, I've tried to really make it lean, make it effects that I would actually use and not just throw in a bunch of variations of the same 50 effects. Continuing on, let me tell you about the transitions that I've put in here and how to use these. So if you notice, this folder seems a lot bigger, but really it's just because the transitions have to come in two parts, an A and a B. So you have your A clips and your B clips, or one and two, or whatever you want to call them, in and out. In order to apply the transition, you want to just drag. So if I drag zoom in A onto the A clip and zoom in B, onto the B clip, it will add that zoom transition in between the two. Again, this is a heavy effect. You'll see the bar went kind of red. So you might want to press I and O and press return to create a render preview. But you can see we've created that zoom effect and we didn't need to cut the clips, do any adjustment layers or anything like that. Just click and drag. If I want to do it again, let's say zoom out, zoom out A and zoom out B. You see you can even stack 
different clips onto different ends because I've added the keyframes and the masks to make things go properly. So there's a zoom in, a zoom out, and you can just keep going and going. Now those are just some of the heavier effects because they deal with replication and tiling. There's tons of effects that are not so heavy and that I think you could more commonly use as well. So whip, push, left, A side, whip, push, left, B side. And this will create a quick whip transition from right to left. I also have every other direction in there, left to right, up to down, down to up. And this one is very quick. You probably might not even need to render. Most of these, the majority of these, I'd say, are just easily drag and drop. Your computer should be able to handle it, no problem. The few that might start to get a little bit taxing are the echo type of effects and the zoom and the spins. But other than that, there's so many different effects here. That's the basics of how they work. Just drag and drop for the effects. You can stack them and just drag from A to B for the transitions. So in the next part, I'm gonna get into how you can get creative with these, how you can make endless possibilities and some different advanced methods for using them. So here's actually the project file for the demo little teaser that I made using this pack of effects. And I'll show you how I got creative with them and made all of the effects that you saw in there. So this effect in particular is one of my favorites that I mixed and matched together. It's kind of like a colorful light flare that's leaking in from the sides. And how I made it was actually by stacking and, and using blending modes as well. So what I did was I actually duplicated the original layer and I went over and I found the pixel stretch effect and I did a pixel stretch left, right? So that adds a cool little pixel stretch on the left hand side and I set the blending mode of this second layer that's on top onto something like screen. You could even do color dodge or overlay, play around with all types of different combinations, but this unlocks a brand new effect that you can't package together in a preset. There's no way to package multiple layers and blending modes easily into an effect like this, but with these building blocks, you can get creative with it and do things like stack different layers, adjustment layers or layers on top of themselves at different blending modes and opacities to create custom effects. And kind of by accident, I added another crop and this time I inverted the mask. So we got a full pixel stretch going on from left to right. And then I just added the dance party effect, which just rotates and bounces through different colors. And with that on screen blending mode, it created this really cool light flare type of transition that I even let play into the next clip a little bit and that created almost like a light leak transition and a light flare effect all at once. So there's an example of how I just used two effects in combination with each other, but the difference is I put them on a new layer and put that layer on screen. Another example of this was right in the first impact. I actually combined a few different effects and transitions to create a totally custom one. We have a flicker transition, which is right here, flicker A, flicker B, and that's what's creating that black flicker. I had an invert transition, which is invert A and invert B. That's what's creating that flash of color and I also, it's zooming out, as you can see, and I also used a glitch warp transition, which is what's giving it those bars of up and down glitchiness for a completely unique combination of effects. And you can see what's going on here. We've got the invert, wave warp, zoom out. You can see all of their respective names of the saved preset. So that was just a very standard one, two, three to create a really what would take you a long time and complicated effect by hand. And I didn't even tweak it or anything. I could even go in there and adjust the channel of the inversions and do all types of crazy stuff if I wanted to. Another cool example of using these in a creative way that I did over here is some of these transitions will look good just on one half for a different variety or spice of them. So while things like zoom in and zoom out might always look better together, 
Sometimes if you just add a glitch effect like on the B side only, it can give a more impactful and abrupt feel. So in this example, I had the Super 8 effect, just showing that off. And then instead of doing a lens bump A, I just jumped right into the lens bump B. I didn't even do the, that. So it actually kind of created a cool impact that didn't need to transition from A to B. Additionally, if you highlight the project panel and go to File, New, Adjustment Layer, and drag that adjustment layer onto a track above your clips, you can use this adjustment layer to apply effects onto all the clips underneath them, which give you the flexibility of adding effects onto multiple blends of layers, as well as over many long sequences at once, like this dreamy vignette that I just added over as long of a segment as I want. Now do keep in mind, some adjustment layer effects do not work the same. For example, if you crop an adjustment layer, you can't crop an adjustment layer, it just crops everything underneath. So some things can't work on an adjustment layer. Additionally, another cool thing is that you can apply a lot of these effects onto text layers as well. So for this cool text transition, I did these blur out of each other. I used the same glitch warp transition to have that text kind of slice in. And you can do many different text effects as well, although not all of these will work properly on text, but many of them will and also work for your text effects. So that's just kind of more bang for your preset buck there but there's so many different combinations and ways to use these as you've seen, and that's the best way that I think you could use these, is by using them to save you time, by using them as ingredients and little Lego pieces to place and build together in between the gaps of all your different cuts, all your different edits, and going in there and adjusting things by hand if you want, and really tweaking it to fit your project and vision. So for anyone that has supported this, thank you so much. It does help support the channel. And beyond that, I think these are definitely worth it. So let me know what you guys think. Email me if you have any questions. Get in touch with me on Instagram DM. Follow me for more updates. Subscribe to the channel and all that. Thank you very much for watching this. Thank you to everyone that supported me, whether you purchased this product or you just watch my videos for free or you just follow me anywhere. All of your support is appreciated, no matter the kind or what it is. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.